No prob. Always, always down to clown with the DTNS crew. <laughs> down to clown. Hmm. 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 I feel like a canoe. Will the beast. You do? That's not what they make. They go, mm, mm, as they make their massive migration from been watching one side of... So <laughs> hold on. Roger, I am to believe that you have a familiarity with the sound of a wildebeest, but not the concept of the World Cup. I used to be really big in animals. <laughs> used to be. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be honest. Growing up, I played sports, but I was never really interested in competitive sports. Okay. But so. there's a difference between that, which is a fair point to make, and we respect you for it. And saying I've never heard of the World Cup, which no, you were, I didn't say I've never heard of it. Kind of I just like, didn't. He just said he was not up to date on what was going on. I was not up to date you on overplaying your hand. I, I think, think you're. I think you're excessively. Let's roll the tape. Ribbing me. <laughs> I am, I'm sorry. I don't actually know what a wildebeest is. Full disclosure. What is it? What, Sarah? <laughs> you I don't. Just, no, you I mean, were going to tell what it me is, that but you I know what the like... World Cup is and you don't know what a wildebeest is. I just think of it as a very large animal that it I've is. never seen before. It has four legs, it has horns. You see those uh, African uh, Serengeti nature shows where the lion kills like the horned animal that has like a mane on the back that isn't a zebra? It's probably a wildebeest. I thought that was like... There's also a water buffalo, but they're very dangerous. Very, they're attacked very infrequently when they're full grown. Well, Unless so sorry. I'm so into sports. Speaking of <laughs> NBA draft on Thursday, who's excited? Justin uh, is. Justin I'll is. tell you what, I'm, I'm excited to see because there's a couple pieces in play now, as of course, uh, LeBron James, free agent, that will probably reshift things. And we have no more time because we have to start the show. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Sarah Lane, it is your turn to All open. All right. Convince the people in okay. three, <laughs> two. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, June 18th, 2018 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. Are you sure, Tom? From uh, Studio I... I'm Sarah Lane. <laughs> From Oakland, California, I'm Justin Robert Young. And of course, we wouldn't be complete without our producer, Roger Chang. Hello. I do know what a wildebeest is. I'm a little fuzzy on the World Cup. That's okay. Listen to the pre-show on Patreon for more on that. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Google will invest $550 million in China's second largest e-commerce company, JD.com. Tencent and Walmart are also investors in JD. Mm. Survey Monkey registered for an initial public offering on Monday. Survey Monkey, which was founded 1999, says it currently has over 3 million daily users. Sandia National Laboratory is adopting HPE's ARM based supercomputer called Astra as an experimental platform for nuclear research. If it goes well, it could be actually integrated in regular research. Astra is a more powerful, efficient supercomputer with faster memory speeds than x86 CPUs, which makes it great for bandwidth sensitive applications. The U.S. Supreme Court says it will hear Apple's appeal against a ruling that Apple breaks antitrust laws with its app store. A class action lawsuit says Apple monopolizes the sale of apps leading to inflated prices. Google's Daily app, which helps reduce data usage, has added the ability to find nearby Wi-Fi hotspots, set data limits for yourself and others, and find unused apps that consume data so you can delete them. That last one is something I want, definitely. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about 911. Uh, this is one of those stories that I think is good, but it's getting a lot more buzz than I expected. Um, maybe it's because it's one of those Apple finally getting on board with something other phones have and the iOS people getting very excited. Uh, Apple announced that iOS 12 will automatically share your location with first responders during 911 calls in the US if the call center supports it. So there's a protocol that iOS will support. Any emergency call centers here in the US that support that will be able to automatically locate it. And it's more than just 
geolocation with Wi-Fi and GPS, uh, there, there's a, a improved way of doing it. In fact, Apple says it should exceed the FCC's 2012 requirement of pinpointing your location within 165 feet, a minimum of 80% of the time, which is which is very accurate. Uh, and they say there's assurances that location info will only be shared with the 911 center during the call and won't go anywhere else. Doesn't it kind of seem like 911 in 2018 is almost outdated? Like, shouldn't there well, be? Well, I think this is part of it, right? It's like, well, if you were in an emergency and you yeah. really needed help, you know, and someone on the other line is like, where are you? What's the cross street? That kind of thing. Like, this is really helpful. What's interesting is that it sounds like what Apple is doing is uh, basically absorbing another company that's been doing this for a while. But iOS 12, pardon me, will not uh, make you download this separate app, which, of course, yeah. a lot of people wouldn't know to do. Uh, sure. I almost wonder whether or not there's something to just having an app where the the full range of sorting what what issue you need with the government, your local government, that if it's like an absolute emergency, it should be different. Like, I don't know. It, it seems like there's a lot of data that when we interact with law enforcement, uh, uh, we would be more willing to do it if it were had less friction that we have in almost every other way of life like, i kind of feel like 911 is doing what you're saying no because you still have to call them uh well like, i mean you have to make a phone call and and, and in many situations well, where you need 911 that's a major problem but that's the I whole can point squeeze of this, my phone like... and press a button i don't have to actually dial the numbers anymore Sure. Right. And like, let's say, I don't know, you're, you're bleeding out. You can't talk. Like <laughs> somebody can pinpoint you and get to you uh, more quickly. I mean, I uh, can say, Hey, voice activated assistant, call the emergency call. I don't want to say one, one, two, but you know, uh, yeah, no, right. I, I, I'm saying that this is a good step in the right direction. I'm also yes. Anding. I think that we could even go further than that. I thought you were trying to get to a nine one one as a joke in your town. Joke. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole other like thing. Was headed there. He was headed there. Depends on the town. Uh, on a totally different note, Microsoft has acquired Flipgrid, a video discussion platform app that uses video to make collaborative lesson plans where students can discuss and reply to topics with video clips at home or in the classroom. Microsoft VP Iran Medito said that Flipgrid will continue to work across uh, Microsoft, Google, and partner ecosystems. The company also says more than 20 million teachers and students in more than 180 countries are now using the service. Oh, I have God. never used it before, not a student, but I did actually play around with it uh, a little bit earlier and it's very cool. It seems unorganized almost in the way that I would assume Facebook might have been in the early days when it was a lot of students and nobody else. But uh, knowledge base is is cool. And the fact that Microsoft is dropping uh, paid plans now that they're uh, acquiring Flipgrid means that they're, you know, they're serious about uh, the education sector. Oh, yeah. No, they need to be. Uh, Microsoft really wants to supplant Google uh, and keep Apple <laughs> declining in the education space. The education market is a competitive market for all three of those companies. Uh, and not to discount Facebook and Amazon, which also have a passing interest. But hardware wise, uh, you can sell a lot of hardware. If your business is selling hardware, which Google's is with Chromebook and Apple's and Microsoft certainly is as well, uh, you want to have as many advantages and being able to say, hey, we're the folks that bring you Flipgrid. We're the power. We can give you a little extra with that. Uh, is just It's another checkbox. It's not going to make all the difference, but it's another thing to add to that list. GeekWire noticed that Amazon has discontinued the Mayday button on its Fire tablets. Mayday was a service first introduced with the Fire Phone that let users reach a human for face-to-face -face support with one tap. Fire tablet owners will continue to have access to support via phone, chat, and email, and screen sharing with support staff will remain functional. I always wondered if this was a bad idea, uh, and I assumed Amazon had taken enough, uh, enough precautions uh, and was done the calculations to assure that the money spent on it would be well worth it and increase subscriptions. I wonder if a lot of those calculations and preparations required the Fire Phone 
to be successful because it sounds like, and, and Amazon hasn't said why it's removed this. It just kind of quietly did it and people started to notice. Uh, but it sounds like it was expensive, first of all, and maybe not worth it. And B, people were using it to prank. If you go to YouTube and search Mayday videos, you find a lot of people like, hey, sing happy birthday to my friend or, you know, like yeah. doing things it's not designed to, to do. Yeah, the name Mayday is not great. Probably <laughs> Amazon didn't get enough. Yeah, didn't get enough actual you know questions that they thought that their support center could answer. That and apparently they were getting those questions and people liked it, but they were also getting all this other stuff too. Also, it's this is a world that isn't, you know, Less and less are you going to drop a tablet into somebody's hands and then be like, what? Oh, I, I can't do a thing. Mayday. Mayday, right? Because that was, it was what it was for. And to me, it seemed like a lot of getting to know you kind of stuff, that Amazon was still new into that game. They wanted to make sure that this is a thing that without a, without a question, you can buy as a gift. Drop it in your, uh, uh, you know, your 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 older parents' hands, and they're not going to just make it a paperweight because they are scared of it. That there's I, a button that they can hit. I will bet you, at some point in the next ten years, because of AI and advances in machine learning, the cost will come down. the The cost will be appropriate to hire real humans to do something like this. Someone, some company, will launch a replacement service and will say, "Oh my gosh, do you remember Amazon May Day and the disaster it was? I can't believe they're trying it again." Except that time, it'll work in the future. Note Lock this down. In. Lock yeah. it in. Tom's uh, moonshot of the week. <laughs> <laughs> in Salt Lake City this week, scientists from NVIDIA are presenting an unsupervised neural network, speaking of machine learning, that can add an arbitrary number of frames to a video in order to simulate slow motion. They call the technique variable length multi-frame interpolation. Now, you could slow down any video and make it slow, but it gets jerky if it doesn't have enough frames. So what this does is takes one convolutional neural network and estimates the pattern of motion of all the objects and services and edges between the two frames that are that, that you're slowing down and then creates a 2D vector of predicted motion called a flow field and says, well, even though we only have these two frames, let's assume that the ball goes this way and this particle goes that way, all right? A second convolutional neural network then uses that flow field to predict what parts of the scene would disappear behind other parts and applies it to the two images. It's called a visibility map. So the flow field then warps the image in a way like you, you've seen like one face warp into another. It does that and transitions one frame smoothly to the next. The team trained the networks with 240 frame per second YouTube videos, including some slow-mo guy videos that were already slow motion and they made them even slower. Uh, they used an NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPU set and a CUDNN accelerated PyTorch deep learning framework to do all this. It looks good. It is. Uh, it, it, you got to watch the video because they'll show you like, this is what the video would look like if we just slowed it down and it's kind of jerky, right? Because the frames don't roll smoothly together when they're going too slow. And then it shows you what this neural network did and it just looks like slow-mo video. Yeah, no, it is amazing. And it also kind of shows you, you know, I think we've thought specifically with phones that we've kind of hit a saturation point in terms of the tech for photography and video. But as we get more powerful technology, not only on the uh, on on the, on on the desktop, but also in mobile, I think we could continue to see super 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 rad stuff. Yeah, the problem with this is you can't do it in real time. So they're like, even if we could bring it to people to use on their phones, it would have to be a cloud service at this point. So there's still yeah. some work to do. Amazon began offering Amazon Prime in Australia, which offers free delivery, streaming video, and more. Amazon has restricted Australian shoppers to using only the Australian version of the site to avoid collecting Australian sales tax. We've talked about this recently. However, Amazon's vice president of Prime International, Jamie Ghani, said that Australian Amazon Prime subscribers could get free international delivery of items offered on the U.S. website. Mm. So... Joe Ghani did not enlighten us as to how this is possible. Does it mean they're just going to pay the tax for, for people? Uh, because it would seem that even if you say, okay, if you're a prime user, you'll be able to order that U.S. stuff, you'd still have to pay the tax for Australia somehow, right? That also just might be a getting everybody on board kind of thing that you can slowly restrict, right? Or maybe not. 
I don't know. I, I, don't I know. mean, the it, whole point of this was, yeah, that, you know, Australia was having its own store, didn't have the same stuff that maybe the U.S. I, store had. I am of the opinion that possibly, of the view that possibly it's kind of like Costco where they make a significant chunk of their revenue based on membership cards, not just merchandise sales. Well, that's absolutely true. You're right. And yeah, so yeah. this might be like, well, yeah, we might have to pay the, the import tax, but we're going to bet that not enough people buy a lot of big items. And so the tax will not exceed the amount of revenue we would get from people just signing up and paying the, the annual subscription fee. Yeah, I would, I would modify that a little bit. Where they make their money is selling items to the subscribers because they're going to buy more if they're a subscriber. But I think you're right. They're betting that, okay, if we get them to sign up as a subscriber, they'll buy more stuff. And honestly, most of it will be in Australia. So just saying that you'll be able to get the stuff from the U.S. will end up bringing them in, but we won't have to pay that much extra. That could be yeah. it. It could, it could, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely a gamble, but they probably have the the statistics to say like, you know, hey, you know, yeah, some people's stuff will buy like, you know, an oddball, you know, $2,000 item from the U.S., but most, you know, most of the stuff is like 10, 20 bucks and it's, you know, it's pocket change to the amount of money we're going to rake yeah. in from it would not be unusual for a site to say people complain more than they actually use uh, yeah. and then just bank on that yeah. in this case. Well, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to Daily Tech Headlines. It's available on the Anchor app, Google Home, the Amazon Echo, and of course, as a podcast, you can find it at dailytechheadlines.com. The Internet and conspiracy theories. We think of them as hand in hand these days. Uh, the Next Web has reposted an article from The Conversation written by Karen Douglas, a professor of social psychology at the University of Kent, about how conspiracy theories spread online. Now, a lot of you probably think the internet is responsible for a rise in conspiracy theories. And Professor Douglas points out there's no evidence that the internet makes conspiracy theories spread but there is evidence that it deepens the commitment to believing them among those who already do. So just running through the article, which is absolutely worth a read, and she's got great citations of all the studies that she's talking about. Uh, com the conversation does a great job. She points out, first of all, conspiracy theories aren't new. They go back to ancient Rome. There's a whole book called Conspiracy Narratives in Roman History where you can read about it. There's no evidence that people are more prone to believe conspiracy theories now because of the internet, an analysis of published letters to the editor of the New York Times showed that between 1897 and 2010, theorizing remained steady. Conspiracy theories remained steady with peaks only happening during the depression in the late 1800s, not even the 30s, but the late 1800s and the Red Scare of the 1950s. That's when the conspiracy theories spiked. But since the internet happened in the mid 90s, there hasn't been another spike like that. The conclusion that she comes to in her article is that it seems like conspiracy theories are deepened in some online communities. Believers tend to join communities, and, and she cites all the studies that support this. Believers tend to join communities with other believers. Those communities tend to keep out non-believers and filter out any contrary information. So it strengthens their belief because they build their own little echo chamber. And believers in one theory are more likely to share Another conspiracy theory, even if it's unrelated, 77.92% of likes and 80.86% of comments were from users usually interacting with conspiracy stories on other conspiracy stories, uh, according uh, to a, another one of these journal and peer-reviewed studies that she talks about. So I, I love this because I'm constantly saying, well, hold on, fake news, conspiracy theories, echo chambers, what's the evidence say? This is useful. This helps you actually build a way to combat it to say, okay, now we know where the problem is. The problem is the people who believe them solidify. What can we do to relieve that? Well, and I think the the you know the easy answer, which is what I came up with this morning, is like, well, you know, but the internet it just helps you know information travel faster, right? So none of this has really changed over the years. It's just that the internet uh, is 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 heightening all of this. But it doesn't really address the issue of why this happens in the first place. Well, I think that the, the roots of it, again, are kind of eternal, 
right? Like as long as we have had a recorded civilization or the, the peak of, of a civilization in ancient Rome that was worth studying, we found traces of people being like, well, you want to know what really happened? Uh, so that's just kind of, I think, just a quirk of the human brain. But Julius always, Caesar was an inside job, which actually it was. That's it was. Yeah. So that one turns true. out. Put that one in the check mark column. Uh, there, the beautiful thing about the internet is that everything is verifiable, and so in a lot of ways, I think Sarah, you're right, and this proves it that that, that the internet does what it what we have, what, what the optimists have always assumed that it does get information out faster. It makes it more readily available and that leads to smarter decision making. The other end of this is if everything is verifiable, then we know to a granular detail exactly how far people fall into an echo chamber when it comes to conspiracies because we can see the message boards and we can count the likes and we can count the interactions and then uh, create data based on it. But at the end of the day, it seems like we're getting better. I mean, look, if, if, if according to these studies, we what we consider to be, or at least I consider to be the golden age of American conspiracy theory was the 1970s. And that doesn't even apparently register compared to uh, uh, some of the, the gigantic peaks of the 1950s and the uh, late 1800s. Well, think about it. One of one of the reasons conspiracy theories were so popular in the 70s was because we had real conspiracies being unearthed with the Watergate, the Pentagon yeah. Papers, etc. But a hallmark of that time are things like for the Principia Discordia and the Illuminatus Trilogy, which are making fun of conspiracy theories. Uh, and so it shows that people are like, hey, there's real conspiracies. They get pulled out in the light of day. You know, we're not going to really believe that there's there's all this other weird, crazy stuff. And, and that makes sense to me. And it ties into what you're saying, Justin, which is we have more light of day on things than we've ever had before. And I think we've also gotten spoiled by that faster than ever before so that, you know, things don't move linearly when suddenly it darkens a little and, and there's, there's people trying to hide stuff. We start to think, oh, things are getting worse and it's the internet's fault. And it turns out, well, no, it's just the cycle of human behavior. And that's why I love stuff like this is you could say, well, Tom, you're just being naive, but the, there is no evidence that we are believing conspiracy theories in greater numbers. So if we spend a lot of energy trying to stop people from believing conspiracy theories, we're kind of fighting the wrong battle. We need to target like, okay, where are these conspiracy theories hardening and causing people to do more dangerous things and more extreme things because they're hardening in their belief. That's where we should be spending the time in my opinion. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, to to the point about deepening conspiracy theories, the rise or rather popular discussion over flat earth conspiracy theories is always my my favorite because talk about deepening nine times out of 10 in my anecdotal uh, research into this, a flat earth conspiracy is always the Voltron of four other separate different conspiracy theories. You very rarely just wake up and say, well, obviously the earth is flat. It's more likely you believe that they, uh, that People there is are lying to you. You exactly. have general distrust that there is. Yes. That yes. there is a control of the media, that sure. there might be a one world government, that there are uh, falsifications in the scientific community at the very least that the people that, uh, uh, went that, you know, the moon landing was a hoax. And then when you mash all of them together, you get the grandest of all lies that has been hidden, which is that we indeed live on a flat disc as opposed to a round sphere. And that is fascinating to me. And, and, and it, 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 is, it, it is informed by this, that A, conspiracies are meant to interlock, and B, the one thing that we can prove through our verification of the internet is that these things have gone deeper and deeper. Well, and look at Facebook, Twitter, any large social network is now trying to figure out, okay, how do we try to mitigate disinformation and make everybody you know, feel safer and, and this whole thing? Because they're huge and now they have to solve a problem that already exists. Snopes.com pretty much always has my answer. Anytime yeah. I'm like, is this real or not? You know, but that that's a very antiquated uh, solution, right? It's, it's, um, 
it, that's the only real website that I can think of. I mean, unless you're like trolling Reddit for a while that, uh, you know, kind of uh, seeks to unmask a lot of these things instead of people just sort of talking bubbles. Oh, there, no, there's, I mean, first of all, yes, it's the only one that's broad, but there's PolitiFact, uh, there, there's factcheck.org, they're very politically oriented, yeah. but also you can just do a search. I think we forget that. Like, you don't even have to go to Snopes. Just be like, hold on. What well, is it's actually, always the first result? What does the New York Times have to say about this? What is, you know, what, what and, and maybe you don't believe the New York Times. What is, what are the journal articles say? Like, you can find reputable sources that comment on stuff. Uh, so, so they're, you, you know, just, you don't even need, Snopes is great because it, it, it takes all that stuff and puts it together for you. Uh, but there's, there's more information out there than ever if you just go and look for it. Very true. The human race will begin solving its problems on the day that it ceases taking itself so seriously. <laughs> hey, speaking of Reddit, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. Submit stories and vote on other stories at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. If you want to hang out on Facebook, we're there too. Facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Let's look in the mailbag, dare we? We got a nice email from Patrick in Maine who says, I've been listening to Tom Merritt hosting shows for a long time now, a decade. Can't afford to put too much in, in, in the Patreon pool, but just wanted to say, Tom, thank you. You do an excellent job at hosting and telling news in a way that usually makes me fall asleep within 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd say thank you, Patrick, but you're asleep by now. <laughs> so. Yeah. Sweet dreams. No, it's great. It's great. I think, um, I think, I don't know. I mean, I have my podcast that I kind of listen to sort of at the end of the day. So I don't think he's saying you put him to sleep. He's saying you no. soothe him to sleep. I, I, I think that, that podcasting like radio before it is a tremendously personal medium. Uh, and for somebody to feel comfortable in a very vulnerable position as we all are in going <laughs> to sleep, I think is a tremendous honor. I know. I, in all seriousness, I take it as a great compliment and I've been inspired uh, to put out my next audio book, Tom Explains Blockchain to Sleep By. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have insomnia? Buy my book. Not an FDA-approved sleep aid. <laughs> uh, no, it all, it, thank you, Patrick in Maine. Or someone, when Patrick wakes up, tell him thank you for us. Uh, and then Ed was among many people who wrote in very excited. Uh, he said, YouTube premium in Canada, five exclamation points. Woot, five exclamation points. Sorry to spam you guys, but I had to show my excitement because he emailed a bunch of different people. Uh, yeah, YouTube premium out now in Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, South Korea, Austria, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Norway, Russia, Spain, Sweden, and the United Kingdom, as well as Canada and of course the US. Uh, I saw this story this morning. I was like, oh, well, that's nice. It's coming out there. I didn't realize the appetite for it. YouTube Premium, of course, brings you the new YouTube music service, as well as getting rid of ads on YouTube and the ability to see the YouTube Red shows that are now just, I guess, YouTube Premium shows. Um, and Pat Patrick Beja was one of the people on Twitter saying, oh, my gosh, finally, it's here. And it's in France and Finland. So no matter where he goes, he can watch it. <laughs> Congratulations, world. <laughs> world right. youtube premium no it's it's good to know um i was sort of surprised as well but it's good to know that people want this and they're getting it so thanks to patrick and also ed for emailing and everybody who else who does also thanks to justin robert young for being with us this monday what's been going on man uh well you know what it's uh it's uh, that the politics they never stop and that's why i've taken it upon myself to keep everybody up on all the politics that are fit to politic uh, with my free political newsletter. Well, you're going to get five links to the stories of the day. Some of them silly, some of them serious, some hot takes, some gifts, usually from the Chappelle show. Uh, but you can go ahead and check it out at freepoliticalnewsletter.com. That's a great morning read. You got to commute you on, a, you on a subway or something. Man, this will be a great way for you to spend your time. Freepoliticalnewsletter.com. Thank you, Justin. And thank you, everyone who supports us on Patreon, patreon.com slash DTNS. We are up in dollars and patrons over last month, uh, up two patrons right now. Uh, big thanks to, to Bryce, who was the latest patron to pledge before we recorded this show. Uh, join Bryce if you haven't already in supporting the show and help keep us growing at least one person, if not more, every month. Uh, it's our benchmark to, to make sure that we're headed in the right, the right direction. And uh, we thank you for your support at patreon.com slash DTNS.
Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Love your feedback. Love your stories. Keep them coming. We're also live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with the now very happy to have YouTube premium, Patrick Beja. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Good show. Good show. Um, Good show. Good show. If the survey is still going on. You can still take the survey. Uh, we, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, we put a week deadline on it because we wanted to talk about it on the, the quarterly analyst hangout, but but it's still there. We didn't. We didn't end it. So yeah. But, uh, uh, what, do you th- what do you think? Uh, Tom's bookcase. It has to be a green screen. No. <laughs> that's, uh, that's that could be any episode, any time. Plus, it only applies to video. Uh, Flat Earth is the Voltron of conspiracy theories. Oh, that's good. I like that one. Um. People voted up uh, no rise in conspiracy theories. They say <laughs> that's funny. You can know it and still deny it. I hmm. guess that means know the truth, but yeah, it's still deny. It's very um, X Files. Do they start the new season? Do they have a new season? It it I I know it I started. F- I, don't I know finished the last last season with the weird cult. It's mm-hmm. harvesting organs, but uh, I think that was the last episode I saw. Have insomnia? Buy my book. <laughs> I'm James Patterson. I write everything. You oh. should read it. <laughs> I remember when SNL made uh, made fun of his uh, his somewhat prodigious writing, and <laughs> they had Robert De Niro as kind of this uh, as as kind of the uh, kind of that character, you know, the author. Um, James Patterson, like, and he, all these titles were ridiculous. Were so funny. One of them that stood out was the Pokemon Deception. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just really funny. Yeah. James Patterson. I'll tell you what. I, I almost felt bad for James Patterson. I'm sure he re- retired back to his igloo made of a uh, hundred dollar bill bricks. Uh, <laughs> to feel bad about himself, but. Uh, he in those uh, that 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 Today Show interview with the new Bill Clinton book that he wrote that turned into a dissection of <laughs> Bill Clinton's place in a post Me Too world. There was just a James Patterson, a, a befuddled James Patterson, sitting next to him, saying like, "Really? Like, all right, I guess I'll just sit, sit here and not twiddle my thumbs. I guess, yeah, I'll just, I'll just be here." Glad I wrote this book with the next president. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go um, shoot with money. Going back to my igloo. I'm going back to my money igloo. <laughs> I like Flat Earth as the Voltron conspiracy theory. Yeah. I'm going once. It. Going twice. Sold. Sold conspiracy. <laughs> um, would you guys mind terribly if I yes. took off? Mm. Yep, I wouldn't mind at all. We'll talk about you constantly yeah, after I mean, you're go gone. Go ahead and leave, but then the conversation. Remember the movie goes. The Constant Gardener? Well, this is the constant gossip. Uh, the constant gossip. I can I can understand and I will <laughs> rejoin you guys on Thursday. Uh, but oh. thank you for allowing me to bow out early. Oh yeah, no thank problem, man. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Justin. See oh. you Thursday. Oh. You know, we uh I forgot. I I know we said uh Lamar Wilson was gonna be on the show on Friday, and then we did not acknowledge that oh, but we sure actually people... didn't because all right so this is oh, a coincidence completely, did we not say that on friday it's a completely fortunate coincidence i miswrote justin for monday so you said justin oh really though, yes I did say oh i'm looking yeah so, i'm looking at that now that's why i didn't want to was say it anything. a mistake or yes, clairvoyance roger i know i didn't realize it until after the show <laughs> like, just don't say anything we'll be so fine. good as a producer he like can see through time our Google Docs have become omnipresent. You know what? what? Going to happen, Roger? Tell us. 
You know, that actually sounds like a really Wouldn't good Twilight nice? episode. Uh, Twilight <laughs> or Black Mirror, where technology sees in the future for you just a few days ahead. That's awesome. Well, I guess take it back. Lamar Wilson was never going to be on this show. I don't know what you're talking about. Where'd you hear that? It's a conspiracy theory. Conspiracy. Well, you said no. You, I didn't say anything. <laughs> well, I that, that makes sense. Yeah. Did, but I never said that he was supposed to be. Sure, sure. Uh, well, if you were like, wait a minute, it isn't Lamar on a Monday sometimes? Yes, and he will be again. Don't worry. He uh, he had something come up at the last minute today. I think Justin, I think Roger paid him off so that, <laughs> so that his his rundown would still be accurate. I'm not wrong here. <laughs> Here's a hundred dollar brick I stole from Patterson's I money igloo. That's what that's what rich people do, isn't it? Like I can't be wrong. I'm gonna pay you to make it no. Throw money at the problem until it's right. I wish people would throw me. Maybe I could be the problem and people would throw money at me, like like literal money. Throw me some of those <laughs> bricks of, Try. of James Patterson's money. Go to, next time you go to Comic-Con or, or any convention, get a T-shirt that says, the problem, and then in parentheses, try throwing money at it. Yeah. <laughs> throwing money at it may solve. I guarantee I'll just get a lot of coupons. People don't carry coupons it's a conference no event. but like shannon it, morse does uh, she carries coupons everywhere that's a good point she's a coupon is a real thing yeah the I, thing is every time i see those coupons it's for things i wouldn't use regularly so ralph's uh sends me coupons because i shop there uh and it knows what i buy because i do their little card thing and they're great because they're for the things i buy so i'm like this is all this is all I'm, I'm going to buy this anyway you know and now i get 50 cents off or some cases free it's it's a way it's a loyalty program it's like make sure you keep going to ralph's because hey look at this we give you cool stuff i went and shopped last week with my fistful of ralph's coupons pulled all the things that i had coupons for that i needed walked up to the cash register and didn't use them ah uh, i've done that once and it ki i kicked because myself you forgot or you just didn't want to i just forgot just no, you forgot I have them in my that. pocket, in my shirt. I, I I was carrying them as I'm shopping, and then as I go up to the counter, I'm like, "Oh, I'll just put them in my pocket, so I don't drop them." And then I totally forgot. About them. I missed out on fifteen dollars worth of grocery savings because I left the coupons. I had a shopping list and all the coupons, and I left the coupons back on the fridge on because I didn't want to lose them. So I said, "I'll just leave them back right? on the fridge with the yeah, magnet." I'll put them in a safe place. That's the that's the death of coupons. I mean, it wasn't the end of the world because it was, again, all stuff I would have bought anyway. So it was just like, oh, crap. I went through all that trouble of making sure that I had them with me the well, whole time. I in, in the way we do them is we always put the ones that expire first on top. So mm. we're, and I missed this like, ah, I missed out. I missed out. Um, That's how they yeah. get you. Also, sometimes people at the register are like, let me just get this coupon out of the same thing that you had at home. I did the um, Vons slash Safeway does the Monopoly store Monopoly thing where you get the pieces when you check out and you come back and all those pieces like the McDonald's Monopoly can either be a winner or you go online to see if you can try again. The number one item is I think I mentioned this gravy packet. It's like a 69 cent gravy packet. And I remember I got it. I had like, you know, this many. And I said, like, fine, I'll finally just get like 20 packets of gravy because they're all free. <laughs> I go to the supermarket because the coupons are expiring at the end of the week, completely out of that gravy. Like, oh, yeah. The entire shelf is coupon. empty. Yeah. I said, like, well, fine. I want the brown gravy out of that. I'll go with the turkey gravy out of that. I had nothing, nothing. But that's why they issue those coupons a lot of times is to move product that's yeah i have i have six cans of tomato paste like those little cans of tomato paste because mm -hmm. they were great i don't know what to do with them you make pasta i was thinking of making pizza like with bobley but i remember not liking bobley i'll give you my spaghetti recipe yeah you <laughs> gotta season that paste yeah all, all my you spaghetti sauces have a combination of tomato sauce tomato paste um you know spices and stuff garlic yeah. Oh, yeah. Onion. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the one thing I really missed about not shopping at 99 Ranch, which for anyone who doesn't know, 99 Ranch is a, I think it's still SoCal, 
and maybe uh, Western Arizona uh, supermarket. Oh no, and also in Texas supermarket that was originally focused on the Asian American market, right? So we had specifically, them up in the Bay area too, didn't we? I no, we had something like a ninety nine ranch. Right. Oh no, they did. It was on on the East Bay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. So you know, and and like I guess ten years ago got bought out by a big American. Uh, supermarket chain but one of the things they offer in the produce aisle is peeled ready to smush garlic pieces which mm -hmm. is great because normally when you buy garlic they're like little onions you got to peel them and do all these are all already already shucked ready to be just they sell that at ralph's and whole foods too they were they were so cheap they were like, oh they that's were like, why it was they like a, it was like a package for like mm. 99 cents that's pretty good yeah. is that where the 99 comes in uh are things is it like 99 cent store or no? No, no, no. It's a full fledged supermarket. Except okay. that 90% of the uh, stuff they stock is Asian. So, oh. like instant noodles. Uh, they do the standard Asian American, like uh, butchery, like the fish in the giant tanks. So that when they butcher the fish, it's fresh, and, like it's still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, various parts of the cow that most Americans probably wouldn't eat, like tripe. Uh, the brain, parts of the organ, and stuff like that. Um, although they're 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 at least Chinese Americans are big fans of the pork rinds because it's very similar to uh, a snack that's uh, a Chinese snack that's very similar, where you fry. Except that when you fry, you 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 walk fry. It's not a deep fry. Uh, the skin, where it's crispy. People love the pork rinds. Lechon, kind of. Yeah, I guess that would be. Lechon has more meat stuck to it though. yeah and it's it's weird because a lot of that stuff does have the fat and other underlying tissue which most people might be put off although i like it but it's not good for you if you eat too much oh but so god so hungry now i went Should've to subway yesterday so that happened you know ever since i ever since the whole we make made our bread out of that one ingredient that they used in exercise mats or something. I haven't gone back. Yeah, I don't do it often, but I don't know. I wanted a sandwich and it was so close and it was good. I think the only, I'm trying to remember what, I think it was the meatball. The meatball is the only thing I really got there that I liked. So when you were saying you missed 99 Ranch, you're saying you missed it before it got bought? Oh no! I admit one of the things is that uh, no, no. What I, what what I miss about it is that it's very far away and it's a very infrequent shopping experience oh, for but me. There's a bunch near you. Yeah, like you know, forty five minutes away. It's not near, but it's close. Oh, they're like in uh, Pasadena and down in El Monte. Like I know, I was just at it like two weeks ago. Oh, okay, all right. Too much of a drive. Gotcha. You know how it is. It's not the it's not the distance. It's the it's, it's the, traffic. the traffic. Yeah, and there's no direct road, I guess, is there? Mm. And as as with all things Asian American, uh, the parking lots are always packed. Um, I think that you could just <laughs> unlike other American parking lots with Los Angeles there and <laughs> no, no, I mean like it's always packed, no matter when you go on a weekday, yeah. weekend, <laughs> morning, right. evening. My my statement still stands. People need groceries. Oh, and they sell those little desserts things, you know, like the peanut, like my peanut milk soup. Oh, yeah. I saw your picture of that. It's it's really nauseating if you think about it, but it's good for me. It's soggy. It's soggy peanuts and sweetened milk. I don't Ooh. know if it's because we've been watching so much <laughs> Terrace House, but Eileen went over to Mitsua Marketplace this weekend and bought a bunch of groceries there. So she made Japanese curry. And uh, I made. Uh, oh yeah, some... you're close to that one. Oh yeah, it's right. It's, it's pretty near. Yeah. Uh, some some ground beef, and um, what else did she make? She oh she got these little like uh, anchovy snacks, Japanese anchovies. So much good stuff over there. So good. It is, you know, and I don't understand why they can get those great prices because 99 Ranch now is owned by a large American supermarket conglomerate. But like strawberries, I got a basket of just standard size strawberries, 99 cents, and they're all good. Like it wasn't like, oh, these are really bland or anything. For anyone who wants to know, this is what milk peanut soup looks like. 
<laughs> Let's see. Oh. <laughs> It's like some tapioca nightmare. No, there's no tapioca. It's literally sweet. Oh, I know. Milk it just kind of has that title. like. Ooh. Well, so I'm not going to say it's bad because I've never had it. You, if you like peanuts, you'll like it. I think. Eh, I think. Sort of. If you like peanuts in your cereal in the morning, you'll like it. Is there a, pe <laughs> is there a peanut doesn't? cereal? 99 Ranch is owned by Tawa Supermarket Incorporated, a Taiwanese company. Is it? Mm -hmm. I remember them getting bought up by. Oh. No, apparently not. Mm. Apparently, they got bought out by Tawa Supermarket Company, but which is a big company. Uh, Buena Vista, Nevada. And it maintains Oops. its own production facilities in China uh, for quality control and cost. California. Also, you know, call me a conspiracy theorist, but <laughs> You're a, a bunch of strawberries theorist. that taste good for that cheap. Mm -hmm. Weird. <laughs> They're made of people. What's the trade-off? Typically, <laughs> on that stuff, it's because they buy what the supermarkets don't buy. Right. Yeah. It's so, just like it's like overstock for. When, yeah. When a supermarket goes, like the the buyer goes out, they go to. Well, my dad used to go to. You go to like a a wholesaler, and you say like, I want twenty cases of that head of lettuce. You know, five cases of these tomatoes and stuff like that. But the Vons and. Um, Safeway and Ralph's, they all get like first dibs because they're like buying a lot, like thousands. Uh, so because 99 Ranch, a lot of other grocery stores are smaller. They just like, well, I'm going to buy this many. We'll buy all the stuff that you couldn't sell. So we'll get it cheaper slightly. I mean, they were ripe. And that's the other thing. Like when you go, go to Ralph's or you go to um, Vaughn's, typically they're not ripe yet. So you can kind of they'll stay a little bit longer in your fridge. But like the ones at 99 Ranch were like, okay, these are ripe. You got to eat them like in the next two days. Jason well, Chen. Man, I got to make myself go to 99 Ranch one of these days. I um, love actually, it. Actually, I don't think it was acquired. In 90, 1993, uh, 99 Ranch invested in a Chinese Canadian supermarket chain called TNT Supermarket along with Uni President and Cor Enterprises Corporation of Taiwan. But it never sold itself. It does franchising though. Oh, E and E supermarkets. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's really good. I like themed supermarkets. You know, uh, there's Matsuya, there's Bay Cities that we went to where it's like, it's all Italian. Like it just sort of like condenses everything. So if you want to make something, it's all, it, the theme is already there which also keeps me out of huge grocery stores where there's too much choice. But like the prices are great. I mean, most of it's prepackaged stuff, but even on the fresh stuff, it's pretty inexpensive. Let's say a quick goodbye to the video folks. Bye. Thank goodbye. you for being with us. Day. See you tomorrow.